Let's see. First John chapter 2. Okay. It's a little longer chapter than the one we did last week, but hopefully we can we can get through it. And so we're going to start off with the I'm going to go through the verses. I'm going to try to um, go through sections, just hoping that as the Lord spoke to me and shared different things, that um, it would be a, a blessing to you. That as you receive the word, you would just uh, know that the Lord is speaking. And so we're going to start with the first verse, and it's um, just knowing Christ, right? It's talking to us about who the Lord is. And so it says, my little children... These things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate, the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the whole world. And so here in these two verses, we see as the um, word speaks to us, it just says, my little children, right? And we know that how do we each here see little children, right? With love and just acceptance, just allowing them to be who they are and just embracing their, their innocence, their love. And that's how we feel that the word does to us as well. And we see that the word encourages us here that we would not sin, but that if we do, we as believers in Christ have an advocate, right? The fa we can go to the Father um, because of what the Lord Jesus has done for us. We have an advocate who intercedes for us. And it says, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not only ours, but for the whole world, right? We know that as Christ died, loved us, and saved us, he desires to do the same for everyone, right? There's nobody that's too hard for the Lord to save as he desires that all would just come to know that saving grace and his love. And so here um, we see that John begins by encouraging us not to sin, right? And we know that we're encouraged not to sin because we still can sin, right? We still do sin, right? The word says that we are sinners and we need a, a savior. And as Christians who are born again, we are not walking alone, but we have the Holy Spirit as our helper, guiding us daily in all truth, giving us understanding of God's word, and just giving us discernment to know right from wrong, right? Not that we are sinless, but that we would sin less as we grow in fellowship with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And what's important is what we do when we sin, right? When the Holy Spirit convicts us. Um, sometimes I know even I'm, I, I want to say something and then I say, no, I shouldn't say it. And I can feel the Holy Spirit telling me no. And then I say it and I say, oops, oh no, I did my own will, didn't I, Lord? You know, and I just, I just, I, Lord, I, I didn't listen to you. I heard you speaking to me clearly and I still said what I wanted to say right? And I don't know if that happens to any of you, but I know it does to me. And right there, I just repent and ask the Lord for forgiveness and just to continue to love me and just give me that other chance that I can, right? I say, Lord, I can do it next time. I know I can because the Holy Spirit is, will help me. But that's the point, that we would sin less as we seek Christ, right? And just run to our Savior every time, just knowing that He is our advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. And we know that it's his righteousness, right, that covers us, that the, that the Father sees Christ's righteousness in us and just allows us to come before him. And in love, he forgives us. And we see that the word advocate is parakletos in Greek, meaning our helper, our defender, one who pleads our case before the Father. In verse 2, we see that he himself died for our sins, and not only for ours, but of the whole world. Christ died in our place, right, for our sins. And we can see in Hebrews 2, 17, the word says, Therefore, in all things, he had to be made like his brethren. He might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God 
to make propitiation for the sins of the people. And this past weekend, just like Ariana was mentioning, right, in Good Friday service and Easter um, Resurrection Sunday, we were able to reflect on that love that the Savior has for us, right? Just even seeing those videos that they allowed us, right, to vision that more clearly, just seeing our Savior dying in our place because he loved us, right? Suffering till sweating drops of blood for you and for me that we would know his love, how, how wide, how big that love is for us, and just accept that sacrifice for our sins that we might live in light, in love, and that our joy would be complete, knowing that the assurance of our salvation is through Christ, right? Not anything we could do, giving us that eternal life. And we know that to know God, is to trust him, right? And how do we know God? Just by seeking his word, right? Spending time knowing who he is. And if we trust God, we will want to obey him. We will want to love him. When I was thinking of, you know, how the Lord really wants us to trust him because he's a faithful God in all things, right? Not just in the things we want to surrender, but even those things that, that bother us, that worry or anxiety or anything that it would be that we can know we can place that in his hands right and not that God wants us to ignore our emotions or what we feel you know that they're not important they are but he wants to take them we can give them to him and in turn he gives us just that peace that that peace that only comes from him right that trust just knowing that he is a faithful God and I was thinking um about it because I know that nowadays um there's so much, right, that we can buy um, through the internet, online, and I don't know, but I hear, I do the same thing, and I hear others saying, you know, well, before I buy that, I'm going to do my research. I'm, I'm going to do my research. I'm going to see the quality, how good this is, and there you are. You know, it could be minutes. It could be hours. I don't know, doing research, and you want to know that an object that you could purchase that could be here today and gone tomorrow is good, is worth it. You know, and we can actually use that time and, and research and seek the word of God just to know how faithful he is, even in those situations that we still struggle with, right? It's, our, it's God's desire that we would allow him to glorify his name and that we could give him those things that still bother us, those things we still carry, because I'm sure many of you do, or I don't know if you don't, I know I do. There are things that I can freely just give the Lord and I see him work and just glorify his name. And then there's other things that I say, Lord, I give this to you, but I'm still holding tight to it, right? And it could be worry or just just that feeling that I want to be in control of just seeing that every family member is fine. And then I have to say, God, I know I'm not you. I'm not God. You see exactly where they are. You know how they're driving on the freeway. You know where they're at. And you're the one that's caring for them right? And, and so just different things that we struggle, even just little things as well as huge things. And I know that we always hear that we could be going through things, but we can remember that others are going through even more harder things, more difficult things, right? And just to thank the Lord, um, I know even yesterday, just uh, getting a prayer uh, request from the church, getting a prayer request from my cousin, just stops me in my tracks, right, as I'm just enjoying my day and seeing that others are suffering right now, right? Others are crying out to the Lord for their life. And, and just knowing that, you know what, we can enjoy our moment because God is with us, because he loves us, and he's in control of all things, right? He's in control of all things. And so just, I know for me, it's hard sometimes to um, just, Lord, it's yours, and I completely trust you. But then I go back to the word, right? And so even as we research, as we go, just like we want to find out every little detail that something can do good for us, we can do the same with his word because his, we know that God is enough for us, right? We are complete in him. We will lack nothing, right? Because the Lord gives us everything that we need. And so as we love the Lord as we want to trust him and obey him. We can do that by seeking his word, no, just knowing him, knowing and who he is. And as we see in verses um, <clears throat> three through nine, I'm going to read a couple of them. It says, now by this, we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments 
is a liar and the truth is not in him, right? I read something that says, how can you say you believe in God, but you want to act like the devil, right? Just doing the total opposite. But whoever keeps his word truly, the love of God is perfected in him. And by this, we know that we are in him. By this, we that are in him know that we can trust him, right? He who says he abides in him, ought himself to walk just as he walked. Abide, and we see that word a lot, right, in the word that we are to abide in Christ. That means that we are just to stay there always, like no matter how our situations change each day or what the situation, the circumstances are, abide, maintain ourselves over the foundation, like they were singing in the songs, right? It's a firm foundation as we stand on the Lord. In verse 7, it says, Brethren, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. And again, a new commandment I write to you, <coughs> which thing is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. <coughs> he who says, <clears throat> Excuse me. He who says he is in the light and hates his brother <clears throat> is in darkness until now. He who loves his brother abides in the light, and there is no cause for stumbling in him. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because darkness has blinded his eyes. How many try to walk in the complete darkness, right? We don't know where we're going, what we're doing. We hit things, we stumble, and we fall, right? <clears throat> Same thing is when we don't want to come to the Lord in light and we want to continue in, in darkness just doing uh, whatever our flesh desires, you know, everything that we know that is against the word of God, we know that we are walking as blind people, right? And we're going to stumble. We're going to make others stumble, right? How many times you could be walking and something falls in front of you and you go too, right? It's not just your own steps, but those steps around you. So it's important that we know who we walk with as well. If we say we know Jesus and love Jesus, then we will obey him. And as we walk in that obedience with him, it proves that we love him, right? That we want to do his will because we know him. We know what he loves, right? How many, like even in our home, right? We know our children. We know what food they love, what they don't. Our husband, we know because we know them, because we have fellowship with them. We talk to them. We care, right, about what they love. And so the same way, uh, us knowing what a great love the Father has for us, that we would care about that love and that we would want to do what he loves and not <clears throat> what we desire or, or just those temptations that come to us allowing just our flesh to do whatever, whatever it wants, but that we would allow the Spirit to guide us, to lead us in all truth because we know him. And how do we really get to know God? By having communion with him, having fellowship with him, right? In prayer, in word, and just even gathering with other believers as we are here tonight, right? In midweek service, Sunday service, um, knowing that we're around others that can remind us of the word. You know, um, sometimes we like to hear different talks or people speaking and it has no meaning. But, you know, as seeing this and just seeing that the Lord just wants that open relationship with us, that we would be sincere and honest. We could be that with, even now that we have our groups, right? Like just telling our sisters, right? Like, remind me, remind me of the word of God. Like I'm going through this right now. I feel lonely, but remind me how much he loves us. We can do that for each other, right? We're using the word of God, not giving our own opinion, our own thoughts, but giving the word of God, which we all have because we have received the Lord and we have those scriptures in our heart and we can open the Bible and look and so that the Lord would use us to remind each other, like, let's, let's talk about that. Share with me what I could do right now. Just gathering together, together. And so as we have fellowship with the Lord, we will have that fellowship with one another. In reading a commentary quoted from a book entitled uh, Loving God, it says, the essence of Christian life is obedience. But how do we love the Lord? We ask, Jesus answered this in a discussion with his disciples. If you love me, you will obey me. 
you will obey what I command, right? And so we, if Jesus himself is telling us, if you love me, you will obey me. So the question tonight, we could say, is that what I want to do? Do I want to obey? Not that we can do it in our own strength, but we have the word, we have the Holy Spirit as our helper that just helps us to do God's will. And so if, if we love him, we will obey what he commands. <clears throat> we see that in John 14, 15. Or as Apostle Joe, John wrote later, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, right? We see that in 1 John 5, 3. Just keeping his commandments if we love God. And, <clears throat> and only he who believes is obedient. Only he who is obedient believes, right? Hate for others. If we hate others, we must not be walking in light, but walking in darkness. And as we see God in his fullness, just allowing his word to penetrate in our hearts and in our minds and souls, we will understand to obey Christ, right? That what an inheritance he has given us, right? That promise of salvation, of eternal life, of even experimenting that abundant life now, even through all the trials or difficulties that we see in this world, we can have that abundant life because the Lord has promised it to us. And so just allowing his word to penetrate our hearts that we would be able to live even as Christ lived. What does the Bible tell us? For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart, right? The word of God is living, it's active, it does exactly what we believe it to do. As we trust God and just lean on his word, stand on it, allowing it to just uh, transform us. I keep hearing that word as Shelly has continued to say it, right? That we want to be transformed daily and it's the word of God that does that in our life. As we seek it, as we fellowship, as we talk about the word, and that we would also just have grateful spirits. We know that we, when we are grateful and thankful for things, what happens? We can, we treasure them, right? <laughs> we can treasure our relationship with, with the Lord, even as um, <clears throat> the girls were singing how, um, you know, just how beautiful the glory of God is. And I was just thinking, like, as women, we always want to make our homes beautiful, right? We want to decorate them. We want to do things. And just knowing that, you know, how beautiful it can be when we just invite the presence of Lord and our our obedience as well, right, in us, because just to shape our home, the Lord is good, and he loves us, and I know that even as we study this word, that he's going to speak to us in different ways, and I know even as I was, you know, studying it for a minute, I just had to go and, um, and just cry, just knowing that, um, wow, Lord, even in that, I feel you, because sometimes we don't recognize, right, but as we let the word just uh, dig deep in our hearts, seeing what we have hidden there, just that uh, in a moment, like, Lord, I feel so far, like so far away from obe obeying you, you know, just help me um, to do your will because you're so good to me, right? And um, like just not thinking of, of things that hurt me or pitying myself, but just knowing that how good God is and just focusing on his blessings to be joyful even as we were speaking with the ladies in the group like so many are going through different things but just to know that that joy of the lord is permanent it's stable it stays the same it's enough to fill our hearts when they're broken it's enough to fill our hearts when we're happy and so that's what the word of god does right <clears throat> it satisfies and just comforts us in a way that nothing else can when we have that great full spirit, we will want to please God. We will want to love him and obey him for he has been so good to us, right? Saving us from hell, from the penalty of our sin that we desire, we would desire for our joy to be complete and not dependent <clears throat> on daily circumstances or situations, but just always dependent on God's truth that we would just remind ourselves, that's what I'm dependent on his truth, right? I'm going through this, but his truth says what his word says. And that's why it's important for us to memorize the scriptures so we can quote them and say them when needed, right? We know that God is faithful and just and never changing, right? 
<clears throat> and just like I was saying, you know, we've been sharing just different situations and <clears throat> that are going on in families around us and yet we are seeking the Lord, right? Just holding on to that hope, knowing that our Father loves us, knowing that He's with us, knowing that all things <clears throat> work for good to those who just put their faith in Him, who love Him and just desire to walk with Him and abide, ab abide in Him, right? Abiding in the Lord will allow us um, that continued transformation into the likeliness of Christ. And only by abiding in the Lord, truly knowing Him, walking in his light where we can be open, sincere, and just honest in our relationship with him. We see that in John uh, 15 from verses 1 to 17. We can read all about abiding in, in Jesus and how he tells us, right, that apart from him, we are nothing, right? So why would we want to wander our own ways? God's ways are better than our ways, right? Every day. <clears throat> Just loving God above all else, loving our sisters, right? Just asking the Lord that just even as he has loved us, that we would love him back and that we would love others as he loves us, right? <clears throat> that we would see Christ in our sisters, uh, in our families, that we would just be able to, to love as the Lord has called us to love. And we can love, right? Because he first loved us, right? He showed us what love is. And so... I know many struggle and say, you know what, but I wasn't loved as a child or I didn't receive this, I didn't receive that and our, my relationship is broken. But we see a loving relationship with our father, right? And he um, just gives us throughout the word, just uh, fills our heart, right, with faith, with love, just letting us know that we are special to him as he died for us, as he gave his blood for us. And so we are loved. And because we are loved, we can love others, right? Just loving above all things. Loving God above all things. <clears throat> Having fellowship with one another. And it is a blessing for us to study together, to edify each other, and just to learn from one another, right? That we could really be thankful for these Bible studies because it does pull us away from our even our busyness or are not doing anything, but it pulls us away and brings us together where we can study the word of God together, right? That we, we can learn to just love each other and see that um, the Lord loves us all, that our other sisters have struggles as well. Sometimes just knowing that um, others are in need of the Lord just as you are and that the Lord is faithful and just as he's faithful to my sister, he will be faithful to me, right? Um, God desires to give us all just blessings above what we could even imagine, his word says, right? And so it is a blessing that we come together. And we see that we can love and walk in light because we love the Lord. Why? We don't want to walk in darkness. The word of God tells us if we walk in darkness, if we hate others, if we're always criticizing and not seeing the good, we're not walking in light, right? And we could remind ourselves, wait, is God giving me that thought or is where's that thought coming from? Because we know that God's thoughts are good, right? God's thoughts are pure, they're holy, they edify us and they give us that ability to love and to edify others in his word. So we just thank the Lord for his goodness and we can see, um, we can go on to the, let's see, verse verses 12 through 14, where it says, I write to you, little children. Again, he says, little children. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the father. I have written to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. Right? And here we see that John speaks to all, encouraging all in different stages of maturity. New believers, old believers, ma mature believers. The Lord speaks to us all individually, right? He knows where we're at in our walk. We may be different. We may be different in different seasons, but God's word is the same for all. 
He speaks to us and his word will do exactly what he wants it to do in our lives. We see that that um, here the, the Lord says that those that are strong and have been able to overcome, we know that how do we get our strength, ladies? Through the word of God, right? Just reading the word, um, accepting the word for our lives. In Acts 10, 1034 to 35, it says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works, Righteousness is accepted by him. Abiding in the Lord, in the word of God, it equips us with that strength and power to overcome temptation, right? To overcome sin, to overcome the lies of Satan, right? And maybe we're not walking in continually um, in, <clears throat> in, um, in a sinful way that we were before, but we know that each day we need the Lord we need his forgiveness for what we are doing that is sin before him, right? When it says, like, do not love the world, we always think of just activities that are in the world or whatever, but it could be our worldly minds, right? Our worldly attitudes. If we have the attitude of Christ or do we have an attitude of the world, right? And so um, just seeking the Lord that we would be able to overcome that. And even as we see and allow the Lord to help us to overcome those things, we glorify the Lord even more. We pray and we have faith and we can share it with our sisters because we know that we could share what the Lord has done in our life, right? And as we continually allow him to do greater and bigger things in our lives, we will continue to speak about a greater and bigger God to others, just that they would have that faith as, <clears throat> as the Lord desires. In verses 15 through 17, the word says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. <clears throat> and, and the world is passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. And here we see that the apostle warns again, against worldly love, right? Loving the world and the things of the world. We are not to love the things of the world nor the things of, of the flesh, right? Those desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes and just pride in possessions or even in ourselves, right? That we would not love or idolize things, but that we would love God, right? God hates that, the worldly things, right? The, um, that's why he tells us, do not love the world, right? That we would, would seek him and not the world. That we would allow, we know we're living in the world, right? And the world is beautiful. Everything that God has created, right? That he allows us to see and just experiment. But it's everything that is against his word, right? And even as he tells us to love and we hate or just thoughts that, are, that don't line up with the world of God, we know that they're not good, right? We know that they're worldly. And so that the Holy Spirit would just help us um, to not love those things and not even allow those worldly attitudes to be in us, but that is we seek the word and walk more in fellowship with the Lord, less of the world, more of God, right? We are who we fill ourselves with and <clears throat> that we would always seek the Lord in all things. And we can see in Proverbs 6, in verses 16 through 19, it says that God hates a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that be swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among the brethren. And in Psalm 45, 7, uh, we read, you love righteous and hate wickedness. That's what the Lord hates, right? We know that we're not to hate our neighbor. We're not to hate our, our brother, our sister, but we are to hate wickedness. The world um, can give us what we need and we could seek it all we want, but we'll never be satisfied. It can't give us what we need. Uh, we will never be able to live that abundant, joyful life if we love and seek only the things of the world to fulfill our needs, right? The things of the world we know are temporal, are here today and gone tomorrow. They're just for a moment. But we know that what Christ gives us will last, right? 
Everything that Christ has to give us is permanent, is stable. He never changes. He doesn't love us one day and then the next day he doesn't love us. He's always the same. And so we can always depend on God. We, can, we know <clears throat> that that's where our dependence should be, not on ourselves, not on man, but on God, right? And as we allow him <clears throat> to, as we allow ourselves just to be dependent on him, we will see him working in our lives. In verses um, eight, 18 through 20, it says, deceptions of the last hour. And in verse 18, it says, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest, and none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. <clears throat> And we see here that the Apostle John speaks to us about the Antichrist, that in the last hour there would be those who are against Christ, those who will want to be in place of Christ, liars who deny Christ, deceiving many, and if possible, even the church, many that oppose soft, sound doctrine and just deceiving the elect. And we see that in Matthew 24, 24. It says, they went out from us, but they really never belonged to us. And we see what Jesus says in John 10, <clears throat> 27 through 29. He, he says, says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Right. To know the Lord is to, to follow him. Right. That we would be following the Lord <clears throat> and not just any... Um, teachings how many teachings do we see like in schools now we see them on tv uh, just always teaching to follow something other than the lord right and so that we would continually seek the lord and just hear his voice and even as his word says that we would follow him that we would teach our families to follow the lord our little ones that we would just continually speak the word to them that we would know right that the last hour is it says it's between the first and the second coming of Christ. And how often do we hear the Lord's return is at hand, right? That we would seek the Lord. Jesus warns us of this in Matthew 24, 25. And that we would just let the truth abide in us. And as we read um, the verses from 24 to, seven, 24 to verse 27, it says, Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. In what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. And is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Right? As children of God. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have the confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practice, practices righteousness is born of him. Right? That the word of God would be our light to our path. We see that verse, right, in Psalm 119.05, that encouraged by God's truth to know that we are complete in Christ, that our joy is complete in him as we fellowship with our Heavenly Father, as we know that we have a God who is faithful to his word, to his promise, therefore knowing that it will transform us today, 
right? As we live, it will transform us for tomorrow. We will be ready, right? Day in and day out because we have the word of God hidden in our heart. We may remain firm in our faith, abiding in Christ. We are reminded that complete transformation into Christ's likeness will occur at his return. We know that we are a child of God, saved, forgiven, chosen, justified, holy, and blameless. And this is who we are in Christ, right? That we would just continue to choose to walk, to walk with our Lord, just knowing that he is our king, he is the light to our path, and that as we seek him in obedience, we will love him more and more right? And we will be able to love others in fellowship. That is the title, right, of our Bible study, that we would walk in fellowship with the Lord and with others, right? And just, again, thanking the Lord that he gives us this opportunity to come um, before him, to seek him, and just to allow him to do a work in us day in and day out, right? As we need the Lord every minute, every day, right, ladies, that we would not forget and think that we want to depend on our own strength today, but that we want to depend on the strength of the Lord because of his love, so that we would keep walking with our king in light and obedience, in love. Amen? Amen. Okay, ladies, um, I pray that you would be blessed with through this chapter and that you would just continue to meditate on it um, through the week and just allow the Lord to, to guide you, as I know he will. He always wants to guide us, teach us, convict us, right, of that which is wrong in our life, that we would be more like him. And so we know that God is always at work at us, and we just thank him and um, just continue to give him all the praise and, and glory even before um, our eyes seeing what he's doing, right? Just walking by faith. Amen? I, I, I'm falling apart. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for your word, Father God. And Lord, just thank you that you love us so much, Lord, that you desire, Lord, to encourage us in what we need to do, Father God. Help us to have hearts open to you, Lord, the ears that listen, Lord, and just lives that allow you to do what you desire, Father God, just to form us more and more into your likeliness, Lord, that we would uh, just grow, Lord, each day, Lord, closer to you, Father God, as we seek you, Lord, as you share your word, Lord, that we would see mighty and great things, Lord, as we serve a, a mighty and awesome God, Lord, that loves us, Father God. And so just help us, Lord, to be aware of that, just to know, Lord, how great your love is, Lord. And Father God, just praying, Lord, that you would keep us, Lord, in, in your ways, Father God. Just cover our minds, Lord, our hearts, Lord. Saturate us with your word, Father God. And, Lord, that we would seek you above all things, Lord, for our lives, for our family's life, Lord, that we would stand in the gap, Lord, knowing, Father God, that you have given us that privilege to come before your throne of grace, Father God, with all confidence, Lord, at all times, Lord. And just that we would be grateful, Father God, for who we are in you, Lord, and how you just loved us, Lord, and picked us out of our walk, our own walk, Lord, in this earth, Lord, and brought us to you, Lord, drawing us close to you, Father God. And so we just thank you. Help us to worship you, Father God, to praise you in all the moments that we have together and even apart from each other, Lord, that we would always just lift up each other, Father God, praying for this body, Father, to know you, Father God, and just to experiment, Lord, your greatness in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.